First, we need to import our footage. So just take the clip and drag it into the project. Then drag it towards the create new comp and it should create the composition with the settings of your clip. Next, I will be cropping the clip to the length that I want to use. You can do that by right clicking and choosing trim comp to work area. Let's save our project by hitting command S, choosing a location and naming our file. I'm going to call this demonize. Let's make a new null object that we will be using for tracking and we're gonna call this left eye. You can rename things by hitting enter on the keyboard. So let me find a point in time where the eyes are already open because that's when we will be making the transition of the black effect happening in the eyes. So go to your tracker and if you can't find it, you can just go to window and choose tracker and it'll open up the little window, hit track motion and let's make the search area a little bit bigger and let's choose some kind of part on the eye. So I'm just going for this black piece under the eye here and I'm choosing the tracking area to be the square and the search area to be a little bit bigger. The eyes don't move a lot, so I don't need to have too big of an area. And let's hit track. After the track is done, hit edit target, choose left eye, hit apply over X and Y, and you can see it applies the tracker. So I will trim the tracker to where the tracking starts by hitting option left bracket. And let's make a new null object, call it right eye and go back to the clip and choose track motion. And we're basically gonna track the right eye in the same way that we did with the left. So after applying our track to the right eye and trimming it as well, we are going to need to make the color of the black eye. So I'll go to solid and instead of making it black, we're actually going to sample the dark part of the pupil because as you can see, it's not 100% black. It's actually a little bit blue. So we're going to hit OK. I'm going to turn the layer off and I'm going to mask off the area in the eye. I'm going to call it left fill because that's going to be the fill in the eye. I'm going to choose the pen tool and I'm going to make sure to check Roto Bezier on because that actually helps you make curves. So when you're actually moving the keyframes, it's a lot smoother than doing it by hand. So it basically auto curves every single dot for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and mask out the inside of the eye. Perfect. I'm going to hit MM on the keyboard to pull up the mask settings and keyframe the mask path. Don't forget to parent this to the left eye. That way when the eye is moving, you don't have to mask every single frame. So right now, let's just go ahead and keyframe this every 10 frames or so just to kind of keep it matched. So I'm just going to go ahead and move the entire area here and then fix up the parts individually. So I always recommend moving keyframes in bigger groups just so you don't get any weird sliding on your masks. So I'm going to go ahead and keyframe and make sure that everything is matched up to the eye. So I'm just going to fast forward this. Okay, so the mask looks perfect. So now I'm just gonna feather it by six pixels. Five pixels look pretty good. So you can see it actually looks like it's in the eye. The only thing now is there's actual grain on the real footage. So I'm just gonna match the grain of the fill in the eye to be the same as was shot. So for noise layer, I'm going to choose the footage. And I don't know if you could tell from YouTube compression, but it actually adds a good amount of noise 
to match with what I shot. So I'm just going to choose final output so that it's covering the entire eye. And there we go. All right, let's go and make a new solid. And we're going to sample the white in the eye. So the reflection of the light, which in this case ends up being a uh, full 100% white. And I'm going to rename it to specular. So this is basically going to be simulating the specular highlight. Let's choose an ellipse mask. And by clicking, dragging, and holding Option, Shift, and Command, you can actually make a perfect circle from the middle. So I'll make it about the same size. I'm going to track it again to the left eye. And if you drop down, we're going to feather it slightly. So about six pixels looks good and I'm gonna copy and paste the match grain for the white as well that's already starting to look pretty good the next step is we need to fake a reflection I'm gonna drag in a photo that I took of the backside from what was behind the camera which is just like a bed and some lights so I'm just going to drag this in into the composition, save the project, and I'm going to scale this down so it's kind of fitting to the size of the eye. Now I'm going to flip this horizontally. That way it's what the eye would seem. And I'm going to go to Effect and Presets and type in Sphere and drag the effect over to the eye. I'm just going to make the radius bigger to kind of match the size of the eye. I've seen a lot of tutorials use bulge, which I don't think is the right effect to be using for this. It's kind of just distorting the image instead of actually rounding it to a sphere. So I think this is a way better technique to be using. And I'm going to go ahead and play around with the settings just to kind of match the size of the eye as well as changing the reflective settings to kind of make it slightly more reflective. So now I'm going to duplicate the left fill and drag it on top of the reflection. That way we can use it as a track mat. I'm going to remove grain just because you're not using it in this effect. I'm going to rename this to reflection and I'm going to choose the track mat to be to be alpha mat. A lot of other tutorials show that you should make another mask and they make a really rough mask for the reflection, which is just sloppy work. You shouldn't be, you should not be doing that. So I'm just going to align the reflection where I think it would look good on the eye. I'm going to once again track it to the left eye. And I'm going to change the opacity to 10. You can pull up opacity settings by hitting T on the keyboard. So now you see it's looking pretty good. We have the right color of the black. And we have the little reflection added. I'm going to hit Command S to save. I'm going to disable match grain for now just so I can scroll through the video and the tutorial faster but at the end before exporting, you're just gonna enable all the effects that we've added. So you can see that that is looking nice. So now we are going to animate the eye. So we're gonna take the pen tool and we're gonna start masking a outside shape that is connecting to the circular part of the eye and we are going to go to mask settings and we're going to choose subtract for the second mask so you can see that it's only affecting the part that we masked 
I'm gonna go a little bit later in time to where I want the eye to be completely black. So I'm just gonna choose mask expansion and push it back. I'm gonna keyframe that. And then I'm gonna go to the beginning of where our track starts and I'm gonna make sure that the pupil size now is really, really small. I'm gonna right click on the keyframes and choose easy ease just so it's a smoother transition. So let's preview this and see how it looks. So this looks pretty good and most tutorials would kind of end it here, but I really want a nice and distinct look in the way that the eye expands because I think a normal circular transition is just not cool enough. So let's take a look of how we can spice things up and make it great. Also, I kind of am noticing that it starts a little bit too high. So I'm just gonna go into the mask and just kind of tighten up the the circle here yeah that's looking better it's starting more from the center and don't forget to always save your project i'm going to keyframe the opacity on the specular just so it appears when the when the when the eye is getting filled let's go to let's go ahead to effect and presets and choose rough and edges and we're gonna take that and drop it to our left fill. So let's change up the complexity and make it slightly higher to about five. And let's really bring up the border size, which is gonna bring in that really nice distinct shape of the animation. So you can see that it's filling in in this interesting color. Now what we need to fix is when it gets to our full mask, it actually stops there because it's using the mask as the edge. So what we're going to need to do is make another track mat. I'm just going to bring up the borders even more just so we can get really, really nice flowy edges. So I'm going to duplicate my left filth two which I use as a track mat for the reflection and I'm going to use it for the for the animated mask. And I'm going to delete mask 1 from from the animation, which is the edges of the eyes. So now if you're watching it, you can see that it goes all the way to the corners of the eyes, and that's because you're using the mask of the eyes as a track mat for the actual animation. So now you can see it's really filling in that eye, kind of like Venom was taking over Spider-Man in Spider-Man 3 or I guess the Venom movie. Let's throw on an echo effect and we're gonna actually reverse it. So instead of being negative, it's gonna be 0 0.033 and we're gonna delay it slightly and we're gonna increase the number of echoes to about three. And you can see that it's actually made the eye brighter and that is because the echo operator is set to add. So it's basically increasing the brightness every single time that the echo is added. So if you're gonna need to change that, you can really see the difference in the color. So let's change that to maximum, which is basically gonna be using the already existing color as the darkest color you can get to. So now you can see it looks more like ink filling in the eye. Let's take a look at it in full quality, just so you can really get the sense of what it looks like. And we're gonna drag match grain to the very end so that it's not affected by any of the other effects. So you can see how much it makes the footage blend in with 
the pre-existing video. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that off for the sake of the tutorial and set the quality back to quarter so we can work a lot faster because I'm recording. And let's go ahead and see how else we can spice up this video. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some anamorphic crop lines. This is not the best way to do it, but for the for this tutorial, it will be fine. That's how most people use it. They just take crop bars and drop them in, but that, that, does it, but that doesn't actually crop the video. Let's go ahead and make a new adjustment layer, and this will be for color correction. So I'm gonna call it looks. I use magic bullet looks for my color correction, but you can use any other plugin you like. I'm just going to go ahead and play with my color settings to kind of do what I usually to the color correction that I usually always use, which is shadows, highlights, uh, an effect called pop, which really brings in some details and four way color, making the shadows blue and the highlights and midtones slightly warmer and then do a tone, which is kind of increasing the effect on that. Now I'm going to go in and find some footage of smoke. So I was using Video Copilot's Action Accessionals. And I'm just previewing through all these clips, but I like Atmosphere 6 the most. So I'm going to drag it in, go to Transform, Fit to Comp, and I'm going to change the, the blending mode to Screen. And I'm going to decrease it down to about 64%. So now you can see the smoke makes the scene look a lot nicer. I was lighting this video slightly from the right. So I'm going to go to transform flip horizontal so that the smoke is lit from the right side. So you're going to see it more on the right than you do on the left. And I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and I'm kind of and I'm going to call this ramp because I'm going to make the left side of the video slightly darker. Just to kind of make the lighting even more dramatic. And I'm going to choose the rectangle mask and select that area. And I'm going to go into the mask settings and increase the feather on it so that the effect isn't super sharp. So you can see it makes the lighting a lot more a lot more dynamic. All right, so there we go. That is the effect. So if you want to do it to the other eye, all you have to do is just basically follow the exact same steps and do it to the right eye as well. So I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial, learned some new techniques and the correct way to do these effects. And if you like these tutorials, you can subscribe to my channel and like this video. I have a lot more tutorials coming out. 2019 will have a ton of tutorials coming up. So make sure to subscribe so you do not miss these videos. And if you can, you can hit the little bell next to the subscribe icon to be notified anytime I publish a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.